Lucy here and I've got to ask you this. Do you know the difference between your child's wants and their needs? Because most parents don't and it's for this reason that they feed into their children's wants which results in doing things for a quiet life, giving in to tantrums and generally ignoring the real problem while actually making it worse in the process. And you might find yourself doing this too, and I get it, you just want what's best for your child, like most loving parents, and I respect that. But once you can distinguish a want from their need, your little one is gonna feel so much more safe and secure that they can count on you to not only meet their needs, but also to trust your response to their wants you'll have a calmer, happier child who'll quickly respond to your direction and you'll feel comforted that they're getting all the best things they need to thrive. So in this video, you're going to discover how to respond to wants versus how to respond to needs so that you confidently meet your little one's needs without feeling like they can simply get whatever they want even when you know that that thing is bad for them. But before we get into that, can you please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? When you do that, it helps us reach more loving parents that are just like you, so that we can improve the quality of life for them and their little ones. Now, let's get into it. So, one of the mistakes I see most conscientious parents make is that when their little ones wake up in the middle of the night, they assume it's because of hunger and give them milk. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that sometimes the baby isn't hungry, but where the fatal mistake comes into play is that the parent gives the baby milk every time they wake up in the middle of the night. The reality is, not every time the little one wakes up is because of hunger. And if your go-to solution is to give them milk, well, eventually they're going to form a habit of wanting the milk and they're going to start waking up consistently in the middle of the night expecting and wanting milk, not needing milk. That means you, the loving mom, are going to be losing sleep every night for your baby's unnecessary wants and this means that you're going to find it much harder the next day to be in a bright and productive mood and to give your child your best attention while juggling the home and work and meals and diaries. But could you imagine if you were woken only for your little one's needs in the middle of the night? That would mean you could sleep through or just have one waking instead of waking up multiple times every single night. What kind of impact would that have on how you feel when you wake up? What could you get done that you're currently too tired to even think about? How much better company would you be and how much more joy would you get from a cheerful, well-rested little one by your side? In fact, let me tell you about one of our clients, Jenny. Now her toddler, Daisy, wouldn't go to sleep without holding her mum's hand. So every bedtime and any time she wake in the night, she needed mum to come back to her with the hand. Jenny was exhausted, she felt broken during the day. And Daisy was often getting colds and having tantrums, all because she wasn't getting quality sleep. You see, Daisy wanted mum's hand, but what she needed was to go to sleep. And by giving her what she wanted over and over was making it worse and stopping Daisy from getting the sleep she needed. It was hard at first for Jenny to change things. She felt mean, but she soon saw the huge benefit as Daisy got better at going to sleep happily, knowing her mum was close by. And Daisy started sleeping through the night because she didn't need help to get back to sleep if she stirred. Within a matter of days, Jenny felt like a new woman with renewed energy to enjoy Daisy, who was like a different child, so refreshed and cheerful. That's the power that comes from being able to distinguish the difference between your baby's wants and needs. So now, let's get into the nitty gritty details on how you can tell the difference. So let's start by looking at the needs. A baby really only needs a few simple things from you. Your love, of course, which comes in many forms, so we'll get into that in more detail in a moment. 
They need to be fed, they need to be clean and dry, and they need to be comfortable. So when you put your little one to bed, can you confidently say those needs are met? If not, it's not too difficult to address the need. You see, the trick here comes from preparation before they go to bed. What I do and recommend you do is go over the basics and ensure all the needs mentioned a few seconds ago are met. So you can do this with some simple things, some milk, a nappy change, some winding, make sure they're not too hot, not too cold, nice and comfortable. Then any further fussing from your little one is likely to be connected to a want. And that want, as mentioned, could be derived from habit or expectation, simply not knowing any differently. For example, if your little one has always fallen to sleep in your arms, he or she will cry for that to happen because they want it to happen. And they want it to happen because they don't know how else to get to sleep. They don't need to be in your arms to get to sleep. They just need a new strategy for falling asleep. And that's why I created the Mind Your Sleep Method. It's specifically designed to walk you through the steps to help your unique little one sleep healthily. So if you want that, then click the link around this video for my free ebook. And tell me, what wants does your child have at bedtime or in the night that you know deep down are not true needs? Let me know in the comments below. With that being said, I'll catch you next time for another episode.